So I thought I would take you along with me as I'm touring through a Dollar Tree to see if I can get any inspiration of items in a Dollar Tree to make over for you all for Easter. Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Yvonne and you have landed on Ginger Chick Rehab where I love to take pre-loved items and share the process with you of what I would do with these items. But in today's video, we have a little bit of a twist. So I'm gonna mix in my vintage antique finds in with some of the Dollar Tree crafts for Easter. Do I have some beautiful ideas to share? So I ran across these swing plant stands or shelves, whichever way you look at it. They're just, I, what I was actually looking at was the wood of them. So the smaller pack came with two, and then I have the larger one that I need to cut up because I want to make little Bible stands. I thought it is the season, it is always the season, and what a beautiful way to display these old vintage black Bibles. So the smaller pieces are the perfect size for these smaller Bibles, but I needed some more wood. I needed something to hold the Bible in place so it didn't just slide off the board. And then I also needed something to rise on the bottom of the board to rise it up to give it a slight tilt. So I'm just really kind of guesstimating on what size I think I'm going to need, but I know that I'm just going to cut this chunk right off that has the holes in it. I, I'm not going to use that. So I'll just kind of play around with the size of what I need. Now this is just like a, a little bit of like press board on top of like thin little layers of board. But it will still work for what I want it for. So I'm just going to go over to the chop saw. I'm going to use the laser line that is on the chop saw to make sure that I'm keeping my pieces nice and straight. So my first cut is really just waste. I, I'm not going to be using that piece. I mean, I could have because I could have filled in the holes, but I've got plenty of board to work with. So I'll just make my next cuts and go test them out and see if I like the way that it looks. That's just the way that this wood is layered on top of each other. It kind of kind of splinters a little bit, but that's okay. I'll give it that nice, authentic look. So I'm just going to go ahead and sand any of that shards of wood off so it's a little bit smoother. Nobody gets a sliver. I do have to go back over and cut. I don't think that I'm rising it up enough and I didn't give myself enough of a little piece to stop. So I'm going to go ahead and see if putting some painter's tape on the back of the board will stop that splinting or not. We'll see. It's just probably just the wood, but I thought I'd give the theory test a try. Maybe not as bad. I don't really think that it mattered if putting tape on it or not, but, but at least I gave it a try. So I think these will pieces will be a little bit bigger, something to rise it up and something to prevent the Bible from sl slipping off. So I am going to fill up the wood holes just using some wood filler. <laughs> My wood filler is, yeah, I prob it's probably time to buy a new package of it, but it's still moist enough that I can just fit, fit it into those holes. You know, I try to use up everything I, I always have. So yeah, we'll just go ahead and fill that in, sand it off a little bit. I am going to just go ahead and when I glue on my pieces, I'm going to glue them over where the holes were anyway. So I'm going to use some tight bond quick and thick glue. I just have a glue applicator that it's in, just running a bead just on the smaller piece and then I'll just attach it to the to the larger piece. As I said, I'm trying to like cover up where those holes were and then I'll put pressure on it, but then I'll also clamp it off to let it completely dry.
While my glue is gr drying, I'm going to go ahead and cut out a couple crosses. I just went to Pinterest. I looked for a simple cross printout. I got a piece of drop cloth that's already been washed. I'm just going to cut out a simple fabric cloth. So all I'm doing is taking my pattern and I'm taking a pin and just pinning it in place. And then I'll just cut around that outline of the cross so I just have this simple piece of fabric. So now I want to give this fabric just a little bit of age. So I just have some instant coffee on a plate that I just misted it down with a mister bottle and then I'm just going to saturate the fabric with it. So after about an hour, my glue is good and dry. So now I'm going to just remove my clamps and I'm going to do a little bit of sanding on this board just to round off those sharp corners. Now to add some color to my boards, and I'm just going to use Waverly's Antiquing Wax. It's going to be a nice rich brown that will go with and really pop, not take away from the black of the Bibles. So I'm just going to kind of like paint it on and then I'll wipe off the excess. And anywhere that I might have got the glue, I tried to get it all wiped off as quickly as I possibly could. It will just take a little bit differently, but that's just... That's just that perfectly imperfect, so it'll be just fine. So I'm going to wipe it on and then wipe it off. So my crosses did not quite dry the way that I expected them to, so I'm going to see if I can get them pressed down a little bit flatter. So now I'm just going to set the Bible on. It, oh, it's just so beautiful. So not all Bibles, you know, have like writing or anything. And this is just happens to be one of them on the outside cover that doesn't. So I'm just taking a couple pieces of twine, jute twine, about three of them. And then that's what I'm going to use to tie the Bible onto this little riser. But before that, I will go ahead and place the fabric cross, a little dab of hot glue so that it doesn't fall off and slip around and help hold it down. And then because my jute came in a ball, it kind of just wants to roll back up. So just wetting it down and stretching it out should help it lay a little bit flatter. My next inspiration came from this little bag of bunnies, little styrofoam bunnies and little white pom-poms. So they are so little, they're so super cute, and they weigh nothing. So I'm going to go ahead and put them on. This is a cake pop stick um, that I'm just going to 
poke a hole in. I actually used them for another project to help dry some ornaments during the Christmas season, but this time I'm going to go ahead and glue them in place. So just a little bit of that type on quick and thick glue and then reinsert that cake pop holder. I'm just going to get the three of these all painted up using some of the Color Fusions Picket Fence, just a nice white color. And then since this has paint, primer, and top coat all in one, I think it should adhere to the styrofoam just fine. And then tis the season of chocolate bunnies, so I decided to do three more in Fusion's chocolate color. My picket fence bunnies are dry. My chocolate bunnies needed a second coat, but these palms I'm just going to use to give them a little bit more of a fluffy tail than just that styrofoam tail. So we're just going to go ahead and get these cut up. Now, I wasn't really sure, you know, like, oh yeah, that would be way too big. So we're going to cut them up. There's really like a hard center in them. Um, and then they, after I did that, they kind of wanted to fall apart, but that's okay. I mean, we're going to be gluing, using a little bit of hot glue to glue them on. So we'll just kind of push all those stray ends into the hot glue. And then I'm going to use that same instant coffee watered down mixture to give these bunnies just a little bit of age. Just running it over the picket fence and putting a little bit on their little poofy tails. And then to help it take a little bit more evenly, it's kind of separating on me, I'm just going to take the Mr. Bottle and spritz it a little bit and then just kind of like keep rolling the money a little bit so it just kind of is a little bit more of an even co coating. Um, I think that was going to be, I just want it to look old. I want it to look like it's it's been around for a while. And of course, now that my chocolate bunnies are dry, we're gonna give them a poofy tail also. So a little bit of hot glue, get that little poof in there, trying to get all the ends in there. When I cut them, I was trying to keep them that I, like it wasn't falling apart, that I could just press it in. So. Just going to press it in as much as I possibly can. If I need to trim something off, I sure can do that. But then I'll add a little bit of that instant coffee to these little tails to give them a little age also. There's just something about simple accents this time of year that, not like Christmas where you're taking everything down. Easter to me is like you just add it here and there to the decor that you already have. So these are so simple and sweet. So I have some old wooden spools that still have the label on them. Oh, isn't that not gorgeous? So I'm going to go ahead and fill that hole up with some hot glue and then put them in there and then go ahead and cut off the excess. So I did play around with some of this lace, thinking that I was going to like it. Tried it in two different spots, and I thought, you know what? I don't like it. It's taken away from that beautiful old labeling, and you're just really all, even if I antiqued it, you're just noticing that lace too much. But I didn't want to do that same thing with the chocolate bunnies. It, the chocolate bunnies kind of remind me of like if somebody was to send you like a treat or gram. So I have this stoneware, ironstoneware little creamer that has been chipped. But 
it's still beautiful. So I'm going to go ahead and fill it up with some floral foam and we're just going to make a little array of chocolate bunnies in it. I'll use some Spanish moss to cover up that floral foam. Oh my gosh, this is so, so cute. <laughs> um, yeah, so we'll just hot glue that Spanish moss right into place. I have this bag of wooden eggs. They're very primitive, oldie, primitive in color, but there's this one carrot. <laughs> just one carrot in there and I thought that is a great size for this little arrangement though that is a little bit outdated the little greenery that's on there so I'm going to go ahead and change that out to some of my black and white and well black and cream ticking stripe <laughs> Then keeping with that aged look, I'm going to add a little bit of that instant coffee watered down mixture to what is now the carrot top of this carrot. Since these chocolate bunnies are on sticks, I feel like I can add some of these small little wooden eggs and it'll just really look like a yummy little basket of goodies. And though I don't think it needs any wording, I do have these, which are probably little cake, cupcake toppers. Oh, look at the little vintage bunnies that I ran across at an antique store. So I'm going to go ahead and add one of those in there. So I've seen a lot of people using this little six pack of eggs and look at these eggs are already speckled. So I'm going to make a bunny to go into them. So I'm going to go ahead and go to Pinterest, look up just a simple, just like I did the cross, a simple printable outline that I can transfer onto fabric. So I'm just going to copy to the image. I'm going to go to my Excel program. I'm going to download it into the Excel program. And then I'm going to size it to what I think I need for my sizing. that I have my two pieces of my bunny cut out, I'm just going to hot glue it together. So just on the outer edges, just a little bit of hot glue. I want to be able to stuff my bunny so this will hold this fabric nice and tight, trying to line up as I the best that I can. I could do a trim job after I get it stuffed. It's not a complete match, but that's, that's okay. So yep, just see how I'm just like doing just a little bit of hot glue. I don't want to have like a whole bunch that once I press it together, it goes even farther into the fabric. I just want enough to glue all those edges down. 
Now I kind of have a pocket because I did not glue the bottom down yet. That's where I'm going to start stuffing some of this batting in. It's not going to take much batting. This is just a little bitty bunny guy. So I'm going to press it in using the back end of my picking tool from the Dollar Tree store and trying to get it into the ears and just get him filled up. And then once I've got them filled up, I will just run a bead of hot glue along the bottom to close up the little pillow, stuffed animal, stuffed bunny, um, and trim off any of the excess fabric that does not match up. My bunny done. I want to give some age to this carton. The eggs are the eggs are totally pretty, but the carton eh, it just it needs a little bit of age also. But I also want to age my bunny, so I'm still using that instant coffee is making a wonderful patina vintage antique patina on this. So whether you want to just spray the item and like sprinkle it on or like me where you're wetting down the instant coffee and you're just using a paintbrush to tap it on. I really don't think there's a wrong way. These were already hot glued in before I took them out but I'm going to just get them re-hot glued back in. Have this cute little Peter Cottontail though it has a cute bunny on it I'm really looking at the wording at the top of it I thought it would be just a great feature I picked it up for a couple bucks at a local antique mall that she does a lot of printables like this that are all ready to go and use so I'm just trying to get it hot glued in place and then now I have some of this green paper grass and I'm going ahead and just get it stuffed in here and there with a little bit of hot glue. And then I did the same patina on the bunny, the instant coffee, but now I'm just going to go ahead and get that glued on in there. Just running the bead of glue along the bottom and really pressing it in there. Oh, for the love of bottle brush trees. Bottle brush tree carrots at the Dollar Tree store. Oh, be still my heart. <laughs> Though I don't know why they're on a stand. I don't personally don't think that they need to be on a stand. Oh, but that bright orange is just everything it's beautiful so I'm going to go ahead and cut them off to a little stand because I'm just going to use them as accent and I'll probably like cover up and change out the really green isn't going with the theme that the muted tones I've got going on but I was super excited when I found these especially them being the smaller ones they did have larger ones but for these little displays that I wanted to make I was glad they had smaller ones so now to make something that matches the carrot top match my display a little bit more that's more muted I'm just going to take some of that grass and I'm going to like tie it on it's working I wasn't sure if it was going to or not but I'm going to go ahead and tie that on and then glue it down the stem to cover up that really green stem I can cut a little bit off of it if I needed to but I think I should be able to glue it on there and just give it more of a muted tone to match my display and now that I have them all done I'll just start gluing them in place just like the bunny gathered a whole bunch of little carrots to take with him along the way that really orange just pops against all that muted tones and I really like it so I'm going to go ahead and add some of this cording ribbon just to kind of make sure that everything is tied together just kind of give it a breaking point from the green grass and the cart carton just a simple hot glue on there. And of course, you know, I'm going to add a little bit more of the, that um, tea or that coffee stain dye to age it to make it all come together.
So I can't believe how much I was looking for this type, this color of tree at Christmas time and now I'm going to be stocking up. <laughs> you know it. I am and have always been a bottle brush tree lover. New, old, vintage, it does not matter. So colors, oh my gosh, the colors are amazing this spring season. So I'm going to go ahead and paint this little terracotta bowl up with some Fusions Heirloom Blue paint. Oh my gosh, is that not a gorgeous color? So I find that if you pre-wet terracotta, your paint will take and absorb in better like the chances of it just chipping right off or coming right off on a dry terracotta just kind of like painting cement if you wa water down the cement before you paint it it gives it absorbed into the paint a little or into the object a little bit better so that's why i'm misting it first before i'm painting it so I want to do just a little bit of distressing just around that those sharp edges just showing a little bit of that beautiful terracotta color through. And it was almost like these bottle brush trees were meant to go with this heirloom color. Look at that color match is amazing. So I'm going to be using three of them in this little display. The first one I'm just going to glue right on the bottom of the wood base, just a generous amount, and then stick it right into that and hold it nice and tight, making sure that I'm flat and even. And once it's dried, then I can kind of bend the tree where I needed the tree to be. Then on my next two, I'm going to go ahead and cut them off and remove that base. If I try to put all three bases in there, it's going to take up too much room and I'm not going to be able to fit a lot of other decor in there, which I, of course I want to fill it up with decor. So I'm just going to clip off that wire and then I'll just hot glue it right onto there and then stuff it nice and close into that other tree. And then I could not help myself, but I do not show this little guy in, t in a haul until this next Sunday. But I could not help myself because look at, I, I already had inspiration as soon as I had him in my hand or I saw him at the estate sale. I just absolutely love him. He's a little wind up toy and I'm not going to glue him in so that he, you can take him out and he's just, this is just his storage area. But I'm going to take some more of that green paper grass and start gluing that in around the bottom of the trees and onto that terracotta pot. This bag of eggs came from Hobby Lobby, but I felt as if the muted tones really match even though there's not like the exact blue that matches i don't need to have everything what i'm looking for is the green to match the green of the grass that i put in there And then to break up all that blue that I've got going on between the bunny and the three trees, I thought this pip berry stem that was brown with that bright white would really break that apart. goodness how cute is this all turning out but I have one more element one more element is these little mushrooms from the Hobby Lobby also oh I could not help myself I just have to get those blue ones and add them in
you so much for watching today's video and what did you think? Yes, the simple of taking a board from the Dollar Tree, cutting it up, making the cutest Bible, just the sweetest in remembrance Bible. Oh my gosh, I just absolutely love that little holder. And then just adding some vintage in, painting some of those little styrofoams that don't even look like styrofoam, and then just adding bottle brush trees. Oh, my heart is always so happy when I run across bottle brush trees. And you know, I probably stocked up on those for Christmas. So again, thanks for watching today's video. And as always, if you're part of our YouTube family, thank you so much. And if you're new and you're checking out this content for the first time and you liked what you saw, please smash that subscription button along with the notification bell so you know we uploaded a new video. And we will see you next time, guys, and you can see what we're up to. Bye.